it's been a really long time since I've talked about the flooding here in Plum Grove. But as you guys can see, these, um, these, I don't even know what you would call these. These canals, I'll just call them these canals that they've built here in the new neighborhood. Every drainage ditch across the entire, however many thousands of acres, runs right to these large canals that go rushing down straight to the Plum Grove Road. And now at that point, those large canals completely bottleneck into tiny creeks. Not straight, you know, 50 feet across, 100 foot deep. No, these little small creeks are in fact very tiny and windy and they cannot hold that type of capacity of water. They're not built to hold that capacity of water. And so the developers of this neighborhood, when they master planned it, they master planned a way to get water out of the neighborhood, but they never gave a second thought about where that water is gonna go once it hits the other side of Plum Grove. This is a beautiful sight. Our pond, even though it's not full to capacity, all of those little tiny islands that have popped up there along the middle. The water has come up, I, I would say a, a foot or so. I think the water has at least come up a foot or two in the pond from all the rains. Obviously the grass, this is huge for our grass. You can see that all of the littles, or they must be the little barn, the littles barn. Except for that horrible guinea. Bill. Get out of here. Oh. So I knew this was going to be one heck of a rainy day. So I come prepared, not want to mess up my good shoes. So I will slip on a pair of these rubber boots. These are the ones that I was gifted, but I don't think they came from an individual. There was no note on these boots, but you remember they did come in the mail. I also have my raincoat. Y'all give me a second. Hey folks, Lester here, and it is a rainy day. <laughs> is that not the sexiest look you've seen all day, ladies? Come on. Is that not the sexiest look that you've seen all darn day? Please don't answer that question. Please do not answer that question. Um, I'm here at the sanctuary, and we're watching the weather. And isn't that crazy how... You have been praying for rain for the longest time. I mean, seriously, we've gone a while without any significant rainfall. And now it has rained so much over the last 24 hours that now we're like on flooding alert. <laughs> I don't know what it is about everything. Now we're fine. I'm gonna show you around and let you see that we are absolutely fine. We are absorbing every drop, our, our soil, uh, we have nice sandy soil here, so we are absorbing every drop, y'all, as of right now, I promise you. But it's not the rain that we, that gets us. It's these creeks that flood through here. So right behind that 
tree line over there is a very small and winding creek. And the times that we've had the worst flooding, local flooding, it's when all of the rain accumulates so fast that it comes rushing out of those neighborhoods. And once it hits that windy little creek, there's, no, there's not enough capacity to hold it all. And so what happens when there's no, the creek can't hold it, it begins to overflow. And so it begins to overflow into every low spot and it finds its way, you know, it finds its way to the river. Rocky, I'm making a very serious video over here. And sorry about that. So there's not a whole lot to do today. Ah, well, I see one thing I can do. It looks like we accidentally left the uh, carrot stick in the lunging pan. Yeah, this is a muddy mess. We have our horses inside the stalls right now. Hello. We have our horses inside the stalls to keep them out of all this. But uh, I see that we somehow accidentally forgot a lunging stick. I said accidentally. No one would have done this on purpose, y'all. No one would do this on purpose. But uh, now that the rain is going to slack off, we'll bring the horses out and put them back into the uh, pastures where Donkey Dan's over there enjoying a nice bit of grass. He's not letting the rain stop him. Oh, my God, these chickens. Y'all don't hear them? Yeah, you know, a lot of people tell me that the chickens annoy me more than they annoy you. They say that they're not near bothered by the sounds of the farm is what I am. But maybe it's just that I'm self-conscious. And when they start all that squawking, it just drives me crazy. And I feel like, this is, this is my imagination probably, I feel like if I wasn't here, it's like that tree in the forest. If that tree in the forest falls but there's no one there to hear it? Does it still make a crashing sound? <laughs> and I, I know that's ridiculous, but I feel like when I'm not here, the chickens are quiet. No one else ever complains. If I watch an LE video or a Megan video, I never hear chickens the way I hear them when I'm making a video, never. I never hear them the same. And I don't know why they do it just when I'm around. Seriously. I'm going to walk over and check out this little back pond. Yeah, so I told you that we've gotten rain for the last 24 hours. Guys, I'm not complaining. I don't want to ever be the kind of guy to complain about a not enough rain. And then when it does rain, I complain about that. I don't want to be that guy. But uh, I want you just to see how it's rained so much that our front pond is looking real good. We can hold more. Our front pond can absolutely hold more. Our back pond, this one here, is full to capacity. And that's wonderful. Now, we're not, the overflow to this pond, so as you can see, the, 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 the terrain runs down towards the pond. Now that it's full, it will end up kind of going around the back side on both sides and we have that berm there that we had built this is where all the dirt from the pond went when we built the pond we have it there as kind of the high ground for just in case we ever have animals in this pasture and we do have kind of a flash flood those animals have a about a five foot higher spot to stand on through here than the ground around them and so it's hard to tell from this level but uh, if you walk along this berm, you can easily look to the left. Now this is a five foot fence and you're well over the five foot fence. The berms were a great idea. We had the front berm, which is even higher than this back berm. The front berm's darn near 15 foot high. And we're certain that if we ever have any kind of a flooding event if, and, and that we can foresee flooding, we will take all of our animals and move them to that front pasture or put them down along our driveway and lead them right to the berm and then from that berm there they it listen i'll just put it this way over here if that berm had been there during hurricane harvey we would not have lost any animals that berm was high enough that we would not have lost any animals 
cows or horses or goats, pigs, none of them. If that berm had been there. Well, it wasn't. It is now. So we went ahead and built the front berm. We have this back berm. And then, uh, God forbid it ever gets any higher than that. You know, something else I'll tell you is that the fact that we have horses and donkeys here and not cattle, if we ever had any kind of potential flooding event where we actually had warning of, a, of an impending flood, you do know that the first things that happen during a flood in this area is the roads become impassable. Now guys, let me turn my camera around for this. Let me turn my camera around and explain this to you. I don't know why, but it's maybe the teacher in me. I feel like if I can look you in the eye, it makes more sense. <laughs> You're like, Lester, just show me the animals. No one wants to see you. Um, a lot of people don't understand the dynamic of a flood and how it happens but your creeks will overflow their banks and that means that they will normally cross over the roads if you only have one road coming in and one road going out and you have multiple creeks that cross that road that means that you can't get out you can't get in and there have been flash floods pop up when i say flash flood it happens faster than you can anticipate there's no warning we've had flash floods come up to where we have been trapped outside of the house we've been trapped away from home we've also had floods come where we've been trapped here at home but when i say trapped it means you're not leaving you're not coming in and you're not getting out and so a lot of people who were screaming holler about not evacuating animals don't understand that if your roads are impassable then you have nowhere to evacuate animals to. And you don't always foresee what's going to happen in a flood. You don't have a, some kind of a warning, some kind of an alert on your phone that's, that's going to tell you your roads will become impassable, your creeks will continue to rise, your river will fill to capacity, the river that flows into the Gulf will not be able to because the tide is coming in, not moving out, and all of those factors will tie together to where you're going to get flooding on your property. They don't, it doesn't work that way. It does not work that way. That's not the way science breaks it down. And in fact, even though I just now told you the way flooding the, the I just now told you the science behind flooding here. That's because I live here and I know what happens and how it happens but I can't foresee that's when that's going to happen. You don't foresee it. You just realize afterwards, all of those things came together and created, I'll just call it the perfect storm. So bottom line is getting those berms was the best money we ever spent. And it wasn't even our money. That came from those Facebook supporters. Uh, remember, remember those people I say, don't be giving us your money. Keep your money for yourself. Well, some people refuse to listen to me. They just have, they just block me out and they do the Facebook supporter anyway. And so what we do with that kind of money is vet bills. We buy hay. We dug those ponds. We built those berms. We find ways to turn that money directly back into the farm and the well-being of the animals. So what I'm saying is, number one, thank you to those Facebook supporters who are so gosh darn hard-headed. And then uh, number two, all of our monies, all of the monies that we collect are always turned right back around to the babies. Let's go see some horses, shall we? Let's go visit some horses. Hi, hello, sir. Are you so upset because you're <laughs> in the stall? You want to come out? You want to come out of there? You want to run and be free in this rain? You think I'm going to let you out of there? I will. Give me a second, okay? Let me say how to read it first. Hey, sweetie. Are you being sweet today? Are you being a sweet girl? 
Who do you love? Who do you love, my sweet girl? Who do you love? Tell me who you love. Oh, sweetie, you do love me, don't you? You only bite a little bit. She only bites a little bit, y'all. A little bit. Such a pretty girl. Oh, them chickens and roosters. Hello, sir. How are you doing? I'm on the good side. I'm on the good side. You stay on the good side. All right, sweetie, so come here. Come on, baby. All right. Okay, so, we a little coffee. A little bit big for her. All right, sweetie. Okay, come on, sweetie. Come on, sweetie. Come on, sweetie.